Hi and welcome back. So in the last video we added a whole bunch of control outputs and a number of additional control inputs to the pipeline and before then we added these three flags to the ALU. So it's the zero flag, the logical carry and the arithmetic carry. Now there are a couple of additional flags that I think would be very useful for when we get to programming this thing and so I'd like to, to look at creating those. Arithmetic carry is very useful to have when we're dealing with unsigned values. So if I add two unsigned numbers and they don't fit in the result, the carry flag will be set. But with signed numbers, if I'm subtracting a number that's stored in two's complement format, then that relies on the fact that the numbers added together will overflow and wrap around in order to get to the result that we want. So the carry flag is going to be set a lot of the time when we're dealing with signed numbers and it's not really giving us the useful information we'd like. I would like to add two flags, one a sign flag and secondly an overflow flag. The sign flag is simply the sign of the result. So we can literally just connect that to the top output line. So here the top bit is set and if this was a, a signed 8-bit quantity that would mean this is negative. So the sign flag is uh, showing us that it's negative. An overflow flag is going to require a little bit of extra calculation though. Okay, so knowing when an arithmetic operation has overflowed, when the incoming values and the result are signed, is a little bit more complex than just checking the carry flag. But we do have information we can derive this from. We've, we can look at the sign bits of the two inputs and of the result. So for our two inputs, each could be either negative or positive, so we've got four combinations of what's going on. And then we need to think a little bit about what the possible results could be if the numbers working and not overflowing. So if the two inputs are positive, the only legitimate result is positive. The same is true of negative. If both numbers are negative and we're adding those together, then we expect a negative result. But if the left-hand input is positive and the right-hand input is negative, or the other way around, then we could potentially have both results we don't actually have any risk of an overflow at this point because if we're adding a negative number to a positive number the magnitude of that negative number is not going to be great enough to uh, remove whatever positive quantity the other input is and overflow it down past the bottom of the negative range. So it's the two positive inputs and two negative inputs cases that we have to worry about and we've got this clear case where if these signs don't match we've suffered from an overflow. So let's put that into a truth table. Zero is positive and one is negative. So this is the same as what the top bit in any of these given registers would be. And so we've got eight permutations of result. So we can plug in the elements from this table and see what we got. So these are the six cases where we know we're not going to have a problem. The left hand and right hand inputs are positive and the result is positive, so that's not overlapped. Same with the negatives, and we've got our, uh, our four other cases in the corners here. So then we've got the two remaining cases where the signs are not what we expect. So we've got two positive or two negative inputs, and then we've got the resulting sign is the opposite. So this is quite nice. We've got quite a, a simple logical layout here. So we just need to look at how to build a circuit that will uh, give us this overflow value from these inputs. The pattern here is interesting. We only have a positive overflow when the two inputs have the same sign, but where the inputs are a 1, it's an overflow if we've got a 0 in the result sign, and the exact opposite of that in the case of a negative result. 
let's think about how we can break this down from a circuitry perspective. If we look at this truth table, the lower half of this is essentially a mirror of the upper half with the bits inverted. So we can take advantage of that. We can use an exclusive OR gate and exclusive OR both of the input sign bits with the result sign bit. And this is basically going to invert this so we can basically ignore the bottom half of this table now only look at the top half and we're only interested in the the left hand and right hand sign bit because if we had a, a negative result we've inverted these and they'd be the same so from here if both of these exclusive or gates are outputting a one then we have an overflow so we can turn that into a usable signal just with an AND gate. Now we've already got an AND chip here and that still has a AND gate available to us so let's see if we can uh, make use of that and I've got an exclusive OR gate here Okay, now this is a four input AND gate, a two input one would suffice, but we may as well reuse this. So I've already got two of the inputs to this pulled high, so we can treat this as a two input AND gate. So it's the outputs from the exclusive ORs taken to the inputs of the AND gate. That's the output of the AND gate taken to our new overflow flag. But now we've got to get the free sign bits from the two inputs and the result up to the exclusive OR gate. So this is the sign of the result. So we want to drive that into two inputs. or one of the inputs from two of the gates. And the left hand sign bit is all the way over here. Okay, so this is a little bit of test code I've set up for, for this. So I've got a negative 100 and negative 7, which I'm going to successively add. So the negative 100 will become negative 107, 114, and, until it, and that will keep going until it overflows. Right, so our overflow bit is not set but as expected our carry flag is. So we've got the correct result. Now the next clock will cycle it past negative 128 and it will overflow. So yes, that's worked. Okay, now these flags are actually very powerful when we're trying to compare numbers and work out what's going on because you might think that you know, a carry and an overflow are only useful for finding out when things go wrong but actually they're very powerful for comparing numbers and understanding the flow of operations. By performing subtractions between numbers I can compare the carry flag and the zero flag to do a series of comparisons on unsigned numbers to try and work out whether or not um, one number was greater than the other or equal to the other or less than and the overflow flag in combination with the zero flag lets me do the same kind of operations on signed values. Okay, that's a nice little addition. Okay, thanks for watching.
Goodbye.